team that would help. As, as a, talk, a tournament organizer, um, I'm sure you echo most of Gregory's sentiments in my all. Yep. But, but what are some of the, the things you see when parents drop off kids or when kids show up at, at these tournaments? Well, um, the tournament I held in January, I was actually surprised that I got a call from a parent who said that they are dropping off their son at 9, 9 o'clock and the tournament was scheduled for 11 a.m. So that is already showing that parents are getting involved in esports. I did a couple more tournaments before that as well where family members dropped off persons to compete in the tournament and came back to pick them up. When we did the cage last year, I saw a grandma drop off two very young kids to compete in the FIFA tournament. So it's showing that there is some... Um, we're making headway in esports in Jamaica into the homes in terms of parents being more um, supportive of kids who are playing video games because... You know, when you were growing up, they were always saying, stop wasting the time playing video games. Yeah, both sides. But with esports now, with that they're, they're seeing the opportunities for people to make some income. Even if it's not a lot, at the end of the day, they're playing a video game and they're making money from it. They're making money from doing something that they love. So, so here's something now. Um, I, want, I want to take some of the questions from the chat. Mm -hmm. So Dorian Williams um, has been asking, would you say there's any significant difference between competitive gaming and esports? Um, well, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just that esports, competitive gaming. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I made an analogy when I had a meeting the other day with some fellow countrymen. Um, competitive gaming can literally be going down to your community football field and playing. Corner you league. Know, sun, you know, corner league, Sunday, Sunday football, boss uh, sweat, what have you. It's still competition, yeah. but esports is when you actually going to a stadium setting or you 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 competing representing for a, a higher stake for you know re, you're representing something and you're trying to gain something of value so from the from the level of competition yes but esports is really the sport itself so yeah. just like where oh, you'd have regular soccer or football then you have world cup so that is really the difference between the two yeah. And um, another thing, so you mentioned, well, I, I know personally about the Dr. Birds, but, but could you, you know, for the, for, for the chat, could you explain to them what, what the Dr. Birds are or, or who the Dr. Birds are? All right, certainly. The Dr. Birds is the name of the national team, um, esports team for Jamaica. It was, we formed the team last year, uh, I think by about April, May, there about last year. And... Yeah, that's the name of the national team. We receive so much criticism from the community itself for selecting that name because you know esports generally is a lot more aggressive. Yeah, you know, a lot of like, names, like, you know. It, it's but my I was favorite. like, all right. <laughs> so I was like, guys, we need to focus on something that's going to represent the country that we have. Yep. You mm -hmm. know, so it's something that you know people will readily recognize as Jamaica. You know, so, people had traditions as like spliff tails and then kind of <laughs> so clear. So, really, yeah. that it, wouldn't work. Work. it wouldn't work. So yeah. we held, um, we did three national qualifiers last year. Okay. And, you know, they were pretty much packed. Games. And the aim, I, I didn't hear what you said. Which, which games? Uh, we did fighters. So we did like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Smash, um, Smash Brothers. Tekken. And then we did... Yeah, Tekken, Tekken, Defa. how could I forget Tekken? Yeah. And we do League of Legends, Call of Duty, and um, I think that was about it. Um, and, you know, if there's anything else, I forget, I probably, when I remember, I'll mention it. And the aim of that was, there's a competition in Las Vegas called EVO, which is the largest fighting game tournament in the world. Yep. And we said, okay, if we're going to show people that we're serious, we need to attend something like this. And we held our qualifiers. We got a massive turnout. We had our point system. And then we selected a national team from that. So a group of eight of us traveled to Las Vegas last year. And we competed at so, EVO. Hold on, hold on, right. Well. <laughs> you, said, you said eight people traveled. So, so what does that look like in terms of finance and uh, logistics? Well, was there involvement with private sector? Or was yes, it man. <laughs> oh, yes. Like, that was a huge bill. Like, the, the cost of hotel, the cost of the plane fare, the cost of food. Like, I think our Uber bill alone. Oh, my gosh. So we, we had um, about six corporate sponsors that gave us cash. Like, we had 
um, I mean, I definitely plug them in because, you know, okay. Royal Computers paid for They want, want to know the involvement with the private sector. Yes, definitely. Right back. What? All right, so um, they, they, we had sponsors that paid, Royal Computers paid for us, our hotel fees. Um, Buzzers in Portmore, Buzzers Arcade, they paid for a plane fare. Um, JPAC um, by La Parton, they paid for our jerseys, amazing jerseys. Um, you know, we had Fresh Approach Supermarket. We had, well, Virtual Reality Jamaica, which is my company. You know, we did, we did sponsorship for that in terms of, you know, food expenses. That kind of thing. So, yeah, it's a big bill. Like any, I went to a Jamaica Olympic Association meeting and I heard some of the figures that these, you know, people required. And I was like, oh my gosh, if this is the kind of money I need to be begging, I need to start begging from <laughs> no, because it's a lot of money to travel with a team and to keep everybody safe. Yep. But, yeah. you know, I say that to say this, sim um, that it is not, it's not a waste of time. It's not a baby thing. It's not an idle thing. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's really a career option. And being a, we are part of the International Esports Federation, and um, which is the governing body basically of esports in the world right now. They're the closest persons to the Olympic, um, the the global Olympic uh, movement. And you know, we're hearing a lot of talking about Olympics involving esports and as a matter of fact this year's olympics which everybody knows has been cancelled had an esports exhibition slated for it and we had two persons training um no more than two persons we had two we had it was two yeah two two games but five persons total training to compete in it and they, you know found out about the cancellation so i know because of that it's even going to have, you know, it's going to be even more significant next year because that's when the staging is going to be. And as you know, it's Japan. Japan is the motherland for video games. That's where Nintendo, you know, Nintendo was born. Yep. So, uh, you know, we're expecting it. And as a national team, we went to South Korea in December and we played in Tekken. We did well, uh, you know, we did well. We didn't win medals, um, but we did well. Uh, and, and, some of these guys, some of the team members, it's the first that they've ever even been on a plane. It's the first that they, they, they've they traveled, had that kind of experience. I mean, I've never been to Asia, so going to South Korea was amazing. It was very cold, but it was an amazing experience. And this is the kind of thing that we are trying to expose persons to, that, you know, it, it you know, it's a viable opportunity that, you, you know, you can take take advantage of. And the work that we're doing shows it. So you know, it, it, it's been it's been a good run for us um, so far, but you know it has its ups and it has its downs. So so next on now, um, I alluded to our team earlier. Uh, like we have you know we have the Doctor Birds, which is a national team, um, and I know in North America in particular, uh, the first esports team I knew about was was TSM Team Solomid. Uh, yeah. Uh, are there are there any similar um, initiatives out here? Because you know Team Solomid. Now they have a, a, a team host, they do training, they do recruitment, they do scouting, they do development. I heard Gregor mention that earlier, but that's one thing. If you, as a, as a in, in your capacity as in Esports Jamaica, is that something on, on your roadmap? Is, is that something that you've seen? And is that something that you think Jamaica can scale to, to become? Like an like a, a esports academy of sorts, you know, where we have League of Legends in one classroom, you have Apex in another classroom, yeah. you have Smash in another classroom. It's definitely something that um, exists um, per se. You have several teams here. I think um, even before the forming of my team, you had teams like Mousy Tail, um, I don't remember, Fighters Allegiance and stuff like that. So those persons were recruiting members from tournaments and forming teams, building and competing together. Um, if you look in Montego Bay, you'll see a lot of persons down there who represent teams. Um, I've held several tournaments where people travel together and compete as a team and um, even the online tournament, well, I'm doing an online tournament now where there's a team from, well, it's called Griffin Esports, Griffin Gaming Esports, I think yeah. it's, it's one of the local um, schools, I don't know which one of them represents. I think, it's, I think it's JC. I'm JC, sure. okay, good. JC, yeah. So. <laughs> I'll use them as an example. They have been recruiting members to participate in tournaments online and they even have uh, their Instagram page and saying that it's inspired through e by Esports Jamaica. 
because nice. the team captain reached out to me a couple years ago or the, someone reached out to me a couple years ago asking how they can get into esports and i started giving them some advice i say you know start think about games that you like playing start start recruiting persons from within your school and start forming a gaming team and get them to compete in tournaments and i'm happy to see that they are they got in they started competing and they're doing well the first brawl Hall tournament that i hosted i think a member of their team finished either third well second and seventh actually two of them and then i see other teams competing on a weekly basis and you know just showing that they are interested in moving into esports so it's the other thing that i'm happy about is that is the younger generation who are actually approaching it in this aspect you have people establishing themselves as team captains going out to recruit members to compete in different tournaments i'm also hosting a league of legends tournament this weekend called nexus cup and there's a team in jamaica with about nine players they call themselves mixed parts and register the team of sages of the mixed parts <laughs> so <laughs> them recruiting um nine members to a team where only five of them will participate in the tournament is showing that there's growth and development done development being done from a team's perspective and the more opportunities yeah. that we present of tournament organize as tournament organizers for competition is the more teams we'll see getting involved Okay, so um, our question that popped up is um, why Evo is considered pro competitive or pro gaming, but um, LOL is considered an esport. Uh, so I want to answer that question because it's something that, that has come up several times, even when I was, I was talking to my mom. Uh, back in the day when I used to play League of Legends hard, yeah. and I used to literally hog the TV to watch Doublelift and Dyrus just run down a lane. So, <laughs> so esport is, is primarily the actual uh, video game. So. Um, no, esports e is the term yeah. of, of, of the, the collective term. So it's it's competitive gaming, um, and Evo is a tournament. I think Evo at Evo they, they have games like um, Smash, Tekken, Street Fighter. Yeah, strictly uh, fighting games, games. just fighting yeah. games. Fighting games. So 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 yeah. Evo is is the is the FIFA of of, of a fighting game tournament in, in a sense. But you have you have um, other competitions like the ones that we're putting on here in Jamaica that they, they mix um, FPS, they mix fighters. They, they mix um real-time strategy <laughs> everything yeah you have, I've, I've even you know in in doing some research back in the day or in, even for this I was, I was wondering if 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 virtual chess or risk is, is considered you know an esport and it is there's a very there's a highly competitive scene around virtual chess and um and risk so so whereas whereas league of legends though so the, the main reason why you hear was sep um, separate league of legends from everything else is that league of legends it became a monster all on its own um, it was one of the first um, games, I believe, sponsored by MLG, which is Major League Gaming, which was founded in 02, which, um, you know, pushed some of the early, early fighting games. And then League of Legends popped up around 2008, Seven. 19. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I started um, <laughs> late. And then they had the first tournament, season one tournament was 2010, 2010 I think yeah, it was. 2010. And then it was in a room, no, no bigger than a, a lecture room. You had, uh, that's where TSM... And um, CLG were, were born the two the two first league teams as far as I I know I could be wrong, and um, league league grew into this giant monster where you have 30 million people sitting down in a stadium looking at it, you have almost 100 million people streaming on Twitch you know watching this one tournament watching 10 people play play video games for one of the largest prize pots and bragging rights for for the next year, so that's primarily the main difference between something like a Evo and um, a League of Legends. But you have you have other competitions. I, I I don't know them by name personally, but you have other competitions. Um, even one Greg and I were looking to host this year, but um, COVID sort of slowed us up. Yeah. But we're looking to bring out you know, first person shooters, um, mobas, um, the, the 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 rise of the the what do you call games like Fortnite and um, Apex? Battle Royale. It was Battle Arena. Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Battle yeah. Royale game. Yeah. So you have you have you know the, the rise of the FPS and, and the Battle Royale games right now. So, but, but also, Jason, I wanted to interject there to, to kind of help with the, the, the difference between uh, a League of Legends event and something like EVO. Now, okay. EVO started from, <laughs> from a long time ago, like 90s type thing. It started in a college, a college um, classroom, a college auditorium, not even as 
probably not even as big as even the UTEC auditorium that um, Bexton hosted his event last year. It started off really smart, um, small, sorry. But back in those days, it was really purely, it was just community, 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 community. There was no such thing as streaming. The, like n the infrastructure that exists today when EVO started, um, it didn't exist at the time. It was just really community-based. And it, it really has grown into that organic thing. Now, most of the persons that attend EVO are actually players. Yep. So in that Las Vegas arena, it's like 90% players where a League of Legends event or a Dota, because Dota and League of Legends are both MOBAs. Actually, yeah. Dota even has larger prize pools than League of Legends. Yeah. And the reason why Dota and League of Legends are so massive is because of the team aspect of it, where EVO is really about 1v1 one fighter game. games. And with the team aspect, it is the closest imitation oh, of, yeah. uh, of a team sport like soccer or what have you. So if you look at soccer and other team-based games, NFL, they draw a lot more crowds than a lot of the sports that exist. And they, you know, they, they create characters out of these teammates, you know, the, 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 the psychology, the, the chemistry that these players have, you know, you might have aggressive players, you might have players that are ticking time bombs and they create storylines, conflicts, that kind of thing around it. And it builds a spectator base. So, Esports is really about spectators, you yeah. know, outside of the competition. Spectators has a lot to do with it. And that is one of the discussions that we are having or we plan to have amongst ourselves within the Federation and the, the TOs where we, we're trying to create that kind of atmosphere. And, and, and that's really the main difference. So when you go to an EVO, it's a lot more organic, you know, players versus players. Yes, you have the... The, the, the competitions and you have all of those things but when it comes to the spectator sport and who follow a team and who rate this team just like how you're speaking about a team you can't really speak about a fighting game team as much as you can speak about a MOBA team True. Um, you know what I mean so you will know the MOBA teams you'll know all the 5v5 and the 4v4 squads but you're not going to really know the, the fighting game teams you'll know the fighters yeah. but yeah. you know it, it, there's a really big difference and sponsors really love that kind of atmosphere they love the storylines and they and also these games are played on computers so when a company like intel yes dropping a 50 million dollars or a 20 million dollars they know they that they're selling the they're selling their they're selling their gaming um their, their, their processors they're selling the architectures are selling the infrastructure because of this. Yep. So okay. we're on the same rig as their, you know, favorite stream or their favorite team. Exactly. I right. Exactly. So um the, and so consoles also the difference between consoles and um you know PCs also you know brings out that difference between you know where sponsors prefer to 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 go to and how much money you know people receive for this kind of thing so it has a lot to do with the tournament organizers yeah. the plans that they have so and, and that is we look at these things and you know uh, there's a lot there's a lot of administrative work yes. that goes into just the federation and it, it really requires it can't take there's no one person cannot do the kind of work that is required so you will have Dexton planning and working and staying up night and a planning tournament, tournament, and then I will be staying up all night and I'll know I don't have a keyboard, a gaming mouse, a controller in front of me and at all. It's just strictly proposals, emails, talking to, to corporate entities. And, I, and then I will call Dexton and say, all right, Dexton, this is what we have. Agreed. Do this with it. You get what I'm saying? So it yeah. is a whole, and we have a whole team. It's not just Dexter and myself. You know, we're comprised of so many persons within this thing, and everybody has their work that they have to do. And it is coming from a stage of informal informality because you know when you're informal, nobody don't take notice of you. Yep. And this is what we preach throughout the region. We we went to I went to Mexico early last year um, for a Pan American esports conference mm -hmm. and. When, when I came back, we had a meeting with all of the, the, the esports entities within the Caribbean. 
and I preach to them that, hey, everybody needs to do this, to this, to this, to this. You know, get your paperwork right. If you need documentation, I'll send all the documentation to you because we, we already started our process and got our approvals. And some countries took, on, took it on, like Bahamas. Bahamas took it on and Bahamas now has an official federation. And other countries, they're doing the work. St. Lucia, yeah. Guadeloupe, they've been established and what have you.